Hey guys, and welcome back to another video here on Trains with Shane. I'm sorry for not getting the video out last week, guys. Um, had some company over, some family I haven't seen in years. And what was supposed to have just been two people turned into like nine people. And on pretty short notice, and it was... There was some stress involved. Not that I didn't enjoy having them here, but it was just... A little bit of sensory overload trying to get around to talking to everybody and spending time with everybody and, and all that so <clears throat> on top of that work has been work has has been and uh, yeah I, I, I look forward to my weekends and my evenings but honestly work has been so stressful that it's affecting my ability to really relax and enjoy my evenings and my days off. Hopefully, that will get better. There's stuff in place that they're working on to uh, augment our staffing a little bit and take some of the load off of our team because the load is great. So, enough about my life problems. We're going to talk about railroads and specifically in scale today as we usually do, and what we've got on the Disgusting Workbench in a Will It Run episode. So, as you guys have probably noticed, we have an atlas, which the lid is on upside down. Um, this is a GP40 EMD. You know I'm a fan. And it's in the later Rock Island scheme. Um... What, what, what did they call that? Was it Chicago and, and something in Rock Island? I don't remember. Um, the older scheme, at least one of them, is a, like a solid red with yellow highlights with big letters on the side that say Rock Island. The later scheme, as you'll see here, is a very cool and, and unique blue and white. And it's a, it's a nice light blue. It's not like a navy blue or anything. I... I'm not sure what the actual color is. Let's get uh, let's get this phone out of here. But even though I'm I'm not a, a specific fan of the railroad, I really like this color combo. As a matter of fact, I picked up a set of decals. I was thinking about uh, sending a GP seven slash nine to my friend. Mario, Marius, you know, that you have seen many examples of his work on my channel. He does great custom paint jobs. I had picked up a set of decals for this with the big R and the white rock and all that stuff to maybe have him do a GP7-9 for me in that scheme. But then I found this on eBay, so I decided to pick this up. It was... It was more than I really wanted to pay, but not by much, really. I mean, it, it's DCC ready, so it's newer. It's not real old, so I'm hoping that it'll have a, a pretty good mechanism in it. As you can tell, it looks pretty untouched. You know, there's not a lot of greasy paw prints or anything on it. It's got knuckle couplers with magnetic decoupling levers and stuff like that. Let's see if we can abscond this from its box. Well, that's gonna take some effort here. I apologize for the noise outside if you guys hear it. Currently, it is July 1st as I record this. July 4th, Independence Day here in the States is close upon us. I live in a rural area where fireworks are completely legal. So I will be hearing fireworks for the rest of the week. Probably up until like 2 or 3 in the morning when I'm trying to sleep because I have to work. So that being neither here nor there, I, I always celebrate the 4th of July in moderation. I love our country. That's all I'm going to say about that. So let's get zoomed in here, see if we can get a little bit more of this detail. 
Um, I'm not expecting it to be, you know, super detailed. It's it's an Atlas unit. It's not a, a scale trains rivet counter or anything like that. I really like this light blue and the modern logo, especially on an older EMD Jeep like this. It It's a mix of my favorite my favorite generation of locomotives from my favorite manufacturer coupled with a, a cool modern at least what was modern in the 1980s late 70s and stuff like that which that's when i was a kid so that's what i grew up seeing and it it, it stuck so it looks like we've got an f here for front 3001 our cab number here got our three chime horn Guys, I'm not really up on my three chime horns. Is that a Nathan or a Leslie? Let me know in the comments. The the mold lines and stuff are pretty good. Um, I'm not used to seeing mold lines this deep looking for the cab doors and stuff. So that's cool. We've got our, our pilot step, but bet you that's not movable. It is not molded in details. Our coupler lever here are MU hoses, chains, grab irons, stanchions, our uh, MU receptacle here, battery box details pretty good, fairly thin and light handrails and stanchions that would definitely warrant some careful handling although they'll probably put up with a, a tiny bit of abuse but not much down here on our fuel tank next to the large thumb some pretty good detail uh, our fill cap and our fuel gauge here on the side of the tank i'm sorry i can't really make that any clearer as you can see by the size of the thumb, we're magnified pretty well. But we've got a warning label there of some kind to the left of what I'm assuming right here is an emergency shutoff. The paint is nice and opaque. There's no real fuzziness between colors. Uh, the paint is thin enough to not obscure any details. You see our latches are nicely pronounced. The radiator and... Uh, I was going to say dynamic brakes, but... Uh, this unit does not have them. I didn't even notice that before. That's kind of cool. Not a lot of... Jeeps came without dynamic brakes, but there were some roads out there. You guys know I'm a big MKT fan. MKT... Um, a lot of their GPs did not have dynamic brakes. All of their SDs did, of course, their SD40-2s and stuff like that. But a lot of, um, but it's not unheard of for Jeeps to not have dynamic brakes, as you see here. Our exhaust stack is pretty good for molded in detail, I'm sure with weathering you could really make this look good. Our fan grills, same thing, molded in, yet still nice depth and blade detail. I'm surprised that we have liftering detail here that's so good and they almost look separately applied. They, they don't stick up quite enough, but they almost look separately applied. They did a really good job on that. Of course, we have our molded in grab irons on the back of the long hood here our light package, our rear logos. Same as the front, although lacking a plow. Molded in details, our coupler cut lever, our hoses. Knuckle coupler. One of these days I'll, I'll actually write a script or a methodology for reviews and not sound like I'm making it up the whole time because I'm you know, making it up the whole time. Let's take a look at the bottom. Yep, details pretty 
pretty sparse on this. We've got our air tank visible now that I moved my thumb out of the way. Forgive the greasy paw print. Obviously split frame chassis. The wheels look a little dirty. If you guys can see that or not. Not terrible. Made in China. Looks like our uh, our draft gear boxes screw in. I always I like that as opposed to some of the models that have these little push-in clips. I think Kato does that on a lot of their models, and I I don't prefer that because I can never seem to get those in the right way. The the Rock Island, as it existed in the past, is no longer a, a functioning road. However, the uh, the Rock Island Railroad still lives on, and I will get some of the details on that and put it on screen if, if I can remember. They're in, I want to say they're in the south, maybe Georgia or or something like that. And they actually were able to purchase the rights to this livery from whoever owned it. It may have been Union Pacific or someone. I, I don't remember for sure. I'll, I'll notate that as well. But I thought it was awesome because their locomotives look just like this. It's the blue with the big, the rock R. And they run locals. And... Um, switch in industries and stuff like that. It's it's very very cool. I was I was blown away, like in a good way, when I saw that that was a thing. The, the only thing that could have been better for me is if like the MKT had been reborn in a local short line, and they were using the the yellow and green scheme that I love so much. But you know, it, it, excuse me, hiccup. That's neither here nor there. What do you say? We stop talking about this thing, get it on a test track, find out what it does and what it doesn't do. And we'll see you guys over there. Okay guys, we're over here on the executive switching layout and we have the Rock Island GP40. So let's turn on our track power forward and dial it up okay we've got our LED in the front oh, we're moving I can hear the motor running not very well at full power. So what could this be? Could be that we have certain some drivetrain problems. Could be electrical pickup issue because as you guys saw the wheels were a little bit dirty. I didn't think they looked too bad. But it could just need a clean and a lubricate. Like I said, that I did buy this used, so who knows for sure. So, let's get this thing back over to the disgusting workbench, and let's take a look. All right, back over on the disgusting workbench with our foam cradle. Let's see if we can get this thing apart. It should just be a matter of gently tugging the... The chassis away from the shell, although it doesn't always work. It looks like it's going to this time. There's always the possibility that this thing does have a decoder in it, and it just doesn't function very well in DC mode. Honestly, that's a best case scenario. Trying to be careful here. I don't want to destroy it. There we 
go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. Not DCC for sure. It's just a regular light board and diodes. Our motor spins nice and freely. I see no evidence of dried lubricant or anything. I can get you guys a shot down here in the worm gear. It's hard to see even, probably hard to see even under magnification. Can't get the focus. There it is. There does to be there does appear to be lube in there. It does not it does not appear to be crusted up or anything. Well, let's just go with our cleaning regimen. Let me get this upside down in here, zoomed out. Let me get set up. Okay, so isopropyl alcohol is not scratching whatever the heck is built up on these wheels. And I know these wheels come blackened, guys, so I know that them being dark colored is not the issue here. It's it, it's hard to pick up on camera. Let me see if I can zoom in. Can you guys see the film that's on them? I'm, I'm guessing probably not. That one shows it decently. So, we're gonna go with the electrodes, the sandpaper. Let me see if I can set up. I haven't shown this in a long time, me doing this. So what I do is I basically just get the thing running, usually attaching to the sides of the frame here. And then I just lightly touch off on the wheels with my very fine grit paper here until the surfaces are shiny. Let me see if I can if I can do this to where you guys can see it. And here we're revved up. I can feel the texture and the grit that's on this particular wheel. and then it smooths out. And guys, if you're doing this at home, you really want to use a very, very, very fine grit um, sandpaper on this. Don't, don't go to the garage and pull out the 80 grit or the 320 or something like that, because that's going to put deep scratches in this stuff. And that'll just be a place for more gunk to accumulate even faster. And that's not good for business. So let's get in here, zoom you back in. See what just a tiny bit of time is done for us here. See how sh much shinier that is. You can really see the light in the reflection there. It's not perfect yet, but that was just, what, 10 seconds, 12 seconds on this one wheel here. Uh, 
Oh, camera focus. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other seven wheels off camera just to save you guys the trouble. I'll show you what it looks like and I'll bring you guys right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, back one more time. So you guys can see. Our wheel surfaces are looking pretty good. There's only a couple minutes on this. And you're really letting the abrasiveness of the, the paper do the work for you guys. Don't, don't yard on this thing and give it all your force because all you're going to do is stall the motor and cause it to overheat and burn up your commutator and stuff like that. Just if you hear the... And, and don't run this thing at full throttle when doing that either. Give it about a third, maybe 50%. If you really hear the motor start to struggle, back off on your pressure a little bit. So we've got all these things cleaned. We are going to use a little bit of Labelle 102 here. And just put... the tiniest drop we can get out of here on these. When it comes to lubrication on these things, guys, less is more. Meaning, don't hose it down. You're not trying to unstick a small block Chevy with Marvel Mystery Oil. All right, let's put this thing back together. All right, I wanna flip that around the way we had it originally. We said that Atlas would need to be upside down. I'm putting it back on. Click, click, good. I'm gonna grab our shell. And as well as we can line it up, That always scares me. Anyway, back together, back to the work, uh, not workbench, we're at the workbench. Back together, back to the layout. Back on the executive angle nook switching layout. Guys, if you want a layout like this, get a hold of Steven Strom with Steve's Trains. Check out his YouTube channel, link in the description below. Ask him if he'll put one together for you. He, he just might. I know he's got several projects that he's currently working on. So if he is able to, it might not be very quick on the turnaround. But he has a video showing how you can build one of these yourself. So I suggest doing that. So without further ado, we are turned back on. Pick a forward direction. We're gonna dial in the juice. Here comes our light. And we're moving. Let's dial up a little bit more. It would help if you guys saw where it was going. Stop. Change direction. More power. Feather it down a little bit. Back again. Creeps okay for a DC operation. I'm gonna stop it right there. And guys, this Roku Han controller, it's really designed for doing Z scale. So it doesn't have quite the, the power potential that even a small Kato end scale track uh, power supply would. And that's why you, you'll see if I'm, I'm turned up to 75% power and it doesn't seem to be moving very fast, that's why. It's designed to operate trains at a, a slightly lower voltage than normal end scale. And coupled with that, Atlas's what they call their slow speed motors. They're designed to operate more prototypical speeds so they're not zooming around the track at 150 scale miles an hour, you know, like some of the old 
awesome Kato made Atlas stuff wood. So you can't stop the rock, so the song says. And thankfully, with a little bit of TLC, you can't stop this Atlas GP40 in modern Rock Island colors. So, with that, I want to thank you guys for joining me on another episode of Trains with Shane. Will it run? Yes, it will, thankfully. DC locomotives are, are pretty easy, fellas. If you have trepidations about buying used stuff online, DC is generally a lot safer bet than DCC. Granted, DCC is the new, well, I say it's the new thing. It's been around for 30 years, but it's a simple analog electrical principle. You know, increased voltage, increased speed. A simple circuit is very easy to troubleshoot compared to a digital control system, which has silicon electronics and stuff like that involved, which at a certain point you can't troubleshoot past is the device itself dead or not and I've got a video on troubleshooting DCC locomotives um, a couple of weeks back maybe two months ago now it's a, a CSX I think also a GP40 if I remember right it may be GP38 but I think it's a GP40 that again uh, was an Atlas and I picked up used on eBay arrived dead we got it running more complicated than what we did here for sure so if you guys have any questions put them down in the comments below write comments tell me if you think this sucks or if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up i i like hearing from you guys and i never hear from you guys um usually i get about five or ten comments on a video and then nothing i would I would like to engage more with my audience. You guys know that if you make a comment, I'll reply as long as your your comment is constructive or in good taste and not just being being a jerky. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Uh, I want to remind you guys I do have a Patreon set up. I'll link that in the description if you want to become a channel member. And you can do that. I don't think if I, I don't remember if I've set up tiers for that as far as a Facebook membership goes. If you want to toss a dollar here or there into the coffers, I think there is a button you can thank me with money because that's always good. So, with that, guys, to my friends and neighbors here in the United States. The 4th of July is coming up. Everybody have a safe and happy Independence Day. Don't forget where we came from. Try to not let the modern day tarnish our, our pride, our... our solidarity there's a lot of negativity out there and thanks to social media it has spread like wildfire so that's why we don't talk about politics on this channel we just talk about trains so until I see you guys next time stay safe and I'll see you soon